So I am our kitten nursery and foster manager at San Diego Humane Society. I originated as a caregiver in the kitten nursery about 10 years ago. And then over the years, I progressed with the organization. And then about three years ago, I um, was also started being included in the foster program because the nursery and foster programs just went so hand in hand. We put everything under the same umbrella. So um, we are a fairly large organization. So um, last year, we admitted almost 45,000 animals. And we also have Project Wildlife at San Diego Humane. So a, a huge number of those animals were wildlife, about 12 and a half thousand. Um, we are a private shelter with municipal contracts. So we are taking in strays, owner surrenders, um, animals, you know, uh, humane seized animals, all of those things. So with us um, having so many animals, obviously keeping our fosters happy and supported and engaged so we can get more animals out is really, really important to us. Uh, at the time of these animals coming in, we had uh, almost 1,500 foster homes and we are right around that number still. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually closed our recruitment because we had um, more fosters than animals to send at any one time. So we wanted to make sure we were engaging the people we had before we brought in new people. And to do all that, we have eight staff at, for, specifically for the foster team and they're spread across four different campuses. And our campuses are about 40 to 45 minutes apart driving distance. So we, it's kind of like having four separate shelters, um, but we make sure that our volunteers know they can go to any campus to get an animal and they'll get the same experience everywhere they go, which is another challenge we have with supporting our fosters is just being so broad in the number of campuses we have. So in that particular year, we sent um, about 4,500 animals into foster care and we are very heavy on the kittens. So we're about 70% of what we send to foster our kittens. And then you can see um, puppies and small animals are next. We had a big um, rat hoarding situation last year. So we ended up with 300 plus rats and then all the females gave birth. So we ended up with 600 plus rats. Um, so all the small animals were mostly rats. So we had to convince a lot of people to take rats. Um, and then dogs and cats. And then we do have, um, we also take in farm animals. So very small percentage, it was like 0.1. Uh, I think we sent a couple of horses into foster care as well. So um, we are seeing a shift in these numbers as we expand foster and send more adults out. So we are seeing this year, we're sending more adult cats and dogs out into foster care. So like I said, it's really important that we have the resources to support our fosters to be able to keep turning animals out into foster care to keep space open in the shelter for all of the incoming um, animals that we get. So the, we are very, very fortunate. We have an entire volunteer engagement team um, and they support the foster team. So the eight people are specific to foster. And then we, in addition to that, we do have a volunteer engagement team. Our foster team are called specialists. So it's similar to what you probably have as a foster coordinator. Uh, the difference is they are not salaried. So they are hourly paid. So we can't, um, you know, they can't be bugged 24 seven by the fosters. They get compensated for any contact from the fosters outside of work. And then we also, at San Diego Humane Society, we have a group of people we call staff partners. So we are not members of the volunteer engagement team, but we are closely associated with them and we are an extension of them. So- uh, Hi, how are you? Um, we go Very out good. and about and engage the volunteers outside of the volunteer engagement team. And then in, on, in terms of other people, this year we're piloting foster coaches and mentors. Right now we just have the one, but we're hoping to grow uh, that particular area of um, having people to support our fosters. 
it gets a little more exciting when we're talking about our training. So we, in 2014, we were doing home checks for all of our fosters and we wanted to expand our program. We realized it was not feasible or the direction we wanted to go. So between 2014 and now we've completely flipped things around. Um, two years ago, we went online with our orientation. We did a 20 minute video orientation and we realized that we'd gone too far in the other direction and we were not giving the fosters enough content. So we went from home checks to pretty much watch this video. So over the past year, we've spent some time and developed um, a system to kind of meet in the middle. So we still do an online orientation, but it's not a video. It's, uh, we have a manual system where they have to read manuals and answer quiz questions. So it's a little more in depth than someone just turning on a video and being able to potentially walk away from their computer or not pay full attention. So we found a really nice middle ground. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about our new manuals and show you how we support our volunteers with our education content. We do um, virtual classes and in-person classes <clears throat> when we can. Obviously the past year, we haven't been able to do too many in classes, but we certainly do for hands-on bottle training for kittens and puppies. We still do hands-on um, contact-free training sessions for our kitten volunteers in particular. Um, sorry, my cat's going crazy over there. It's, you can hear him in the background. Um, for supporting the fosters, we have several platforms. So we do use Volunteer Impact or Better Impact as our volunteer database. It's really great. And if anyone would like to learn more about that, I can connect you with our volunteer engagement team. It really was a game changer um, when we switched to that because you can do a lot of automated training pathways. So if they complete a certain training, it can trigger them to just do the next training without too much input from a human. So um, the automated system has been really exciting for us to be able to grow our program and not take up too much time from people having to process that manually. We have volunteer Facebook group. Uh, it's for all volunteers, not just fosters. And we found that our engagement in that group is really high when the fosters post. And it's actually a really great recruitment tool for getting other like on-site volunteers to be engaged and want to foster. So if they see what the fosters are doing, they are like, hmm, maybe I want to foster too. So we keep everyone in the one group on Facebook. And we also have our foster blog, which I um, will click on in a second that you can see. Let's see, there it is. So I actually have a live one of it, hopefully. Can you see it there? Did it, did the screen share jump? Or are you still seeing my PowerPoint? It jumped for a minute and, but now I'm super seeing the PowerPoint. Okay. There we go. So this is our main way to engage our, or to support our fosters with content. So we have a um, WordPress blog site for our fosters. And you can see our different campuses across the top. So if the we want to see who works at our San Diego campus, they can scroll down and put faces to names on the phone and get everyone's days they work so they know who they're speaking to. They can get our contact numbers. So that's on our, um, our blog site there. We have our just some basic foster resources, um, like our log sheets and things are kept here. So the fosters can just go on and grab those whenever they want them. Our new foster manuals are all located here. So if I can pop this link in to the chat later as well, if you wanna click through this yourself. Um, our manuals, we've spent a really, um, 
uh, almost a year putting all of these together. So we have our basic manual and then we've built what's called foster tracks. So our fosters can kind of choose their own adventure and decide if they want to foster kittens, if they want to foster cats, puppies, dogs, small animals, um, become an adoption ambassador. And then we are working on our specialty tracks right now, which are our medical and behavior tracks. So with our automated system through Better Impact, the fosters can automate their own training. They can be in it as advanced as they want to be and build on their training, or they can just keep it real simple. If they just want to be a kitten foster, they just need to um, follow that one track. So we built this system and it's been really, really great in um, supporting our fosters with the content that we want them to see. Let's go back here. So I love our blog and it, our fosters really like it too. What I didn't click on is we do um, individual animal posts sometimes. So um, our posts will be real cute and the fosters can click on them and decide if they want to foster that animal. And it takes them to a Google um, form where they can express interest in fostering them. So you can click through that um, once they put that link in the chat. Um, in terms of keeping the current fosters engaged, I mentioned we have our training. So it is a step up um, kind of program. We have that in the shelter. They, the fosters start at a core level and then they can step up and become more advanced. So we decided to take what we have in our shelter volunteering and just replicate that with fosters. So eventually they can go to that specialty level and do medical and behavior animals if they would like to. And we find that um, the, it's a really productive way to engage the fosters is by having them be able to be in control of their own training. And a lot of them are really self-motivated. So they will click through it we didn't even announce the training and we had like a dozen people had already taken it because they were just clicking through our system and got excited about it. In terms of events, we include our fosters in every communication that goes out to volunteers and we encourage them to do our fundraising events, our walk for animals is virtual this year. So we're encouraging people to walk with their foster dogs around their neighborhoods. We do a day of giving and we encourage, we have a foster team where they all fundraise together and they're usually the winners. Uh, we do a little competition and our fosters usually raise the most money because there are, they're like a little army, there's so many of them. And then we do foster specific um, events where to keep them engaged and excited. Um, we have our recognition. So you saw a little bit about our virtual badges. Each manual has like a little badge associated with it. And when they do the training, they earn their badge. And in volunteer impact, they can, they see all their badges at the top of their page. So that's really motivating that they can earn all of these badges. We do have hours ribbons that we give out to all volunteers, but the fosters always have the highest one because they earn so many hours. So those are less exciting for the fosters to get. We do celebrate special milestones, um, which I'll tell you about in a second. And we include our fosters when we're doing a volunteer of the month. So we choose four volunteers of the month every month and every other month we make sure to include a foster so that they're not forgotten about just because they're at home. We make sure that they're part of that um, recognition that we give to our on-site volunteers. We do recognize our engagement with swag. So we'll do t-shirt sales um, with foster specific gear that they can purchase. And it usually doubles as a fundraiser, which is great. And then we have foster perks. So all of our fosters get free adoptions and they get, um, they can do holds on their animals for friends and family, uh, but the friends and family will pay the adoption fee. So, these are our really cute um, virtual badges that we, it was amazing. We had a volunteer graphic designer make these. So these were completely no cost to us to have made. And so as the fosters 
go through their training, they can earn these badges. And we found that they get really excited about it. We'll probably put these on some swag at some point and um, like adapt them and make it a really cute, like, you know, dog fosters can get their little dog logo on a shirt and stuff. Um, so that is new this year and our fosters seem to really enjoy that. For kitten or foster specific events, we found that fosters don't really enjoy the on-site events, even pre-COVID. We would host all of these foster open houses and invite them and not many people would show up. And what we discovered is virtual events, even post COVID are gonna be the way to go with our fosters because they get really engaged by um, getting to stay at home with their fosters and they will join us for virtual stuff. So we did a kitten bingo last year, a few of them, and it was really fun for the fosters. They, um, we had about 50 of them show up and play just virtual bingo with us. And it was free to do because the prize was naming a litter of kittens. So we didn't give any gift cards or anything out. We just said, hey, your prizes, you get to name this litter of kittens. and. They were all excited. It turned into like a little happy hour for them. They would all join us with their glasses of wine and uh, show off their kittens. So I have um, the site to get the bingo cards is free. It was a really fun event. So if you're looking for a fun way to engage your volu foster volunteers from their homes, uh, I can highly recommend doing a virtual game night like this. We do celebrate special milestones and we understand that not all fosters wanna be recognized in the same way, but we had this one foster and she kept telling us, um, my next litter is gonna be my 200th kitten. And she told us that about 40 times. So we knew this was a big deal for her. So we decided that we wanted to do something really special for these fosters. So we threw them a 200 kitten party. Um, I have a video, I don't know if we'll have time to show it. It's a minute and a half, but we did a little surprise. We did a cake, we did balloons and they came and they picked up their 200th kitten and we filmed it and we made them a really special recognition video that we put on Facebook and highlighted them as amazing fosters. and. Um, a couple months after we did that, we actually um, we actually lost Christine, who's in this picture. She passed away unexpectedly. Um, so the video became even more special to us because we she you know they're her and Mike are, are two of our very best fosters. So it ended up um, being an even more special video. But if you have a foster telling you something about forty times, um, do something for them and make something special. So for us, it was a cake and balloons and handing over their kittens. And it was a really special moment for these fosters. We also do annual uh, thank yous. So I was doing these for the nursery volunteers and I realized it would be really simple to just take out the nursery portion and just make it a general thank you video. So we started making our annual thanks to the kitten nursery volunteers more broad, so it would capture our fosters that foster kittens, or our fosters that take in kittens. So this was a really cute video. I will, if I can play this one, if we have a moment. Yeah. Um, or I can I pop it in the it. chat if it's too, yeah. if we're going to. Yeah, that, that'd probably be better just because we have about a little less than 40 minutes, so. Perfect. Um, we also do, we started doing foster specific events. We did a festive foster gift exchange this year, which was really popular. We had um, about a hundred fosters signed up. It was essentially a secret Santa and they mailed each other gifts to their each other's houses. So um, we didn't have to do anything apart from share their contact information. And this was inspired. We had a foster volunteer that um, let us know she was gonna be alone for Christmas and she was, um, so she was trying bringing us gifts and we set it up. And so she got her essentially secret Santa and it was very sweet. So they were all posting in the volunteer group when they got their gifts. Um, so that was very um, 
engaging for them and they got to connect with their fellow fosters and interact with people they don't normally see in person. And then for us, as we go into this year, we're gonna continue doing virtual events. We're gonna expand our uh, foster roles and badges. We're gonna make a little badge of honor. If someone has a really tricky foster assignment, we're gonna make another little virtual badge that they can get rewarded with that badge. We're gonna expand our foster mentor um, program and we're going to bring a couple of more tra foster tracks. So we're gonna do some safety net fostering and finder fosters down the line. And then that is my info there if you um, want any more information about any of the fun stuff we talked about and I will pop uh, a couple of those links in the chat so you can watch them in your own time. 